I'll call the regularly scheduled meeting of the Beloit City Council to order. We're at 100 State Street, Beloit, Wisconsin, in the City Hall Forum, and tonight is Monday, May 5th, 2014. Can I have a roll call? All counselors are present. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on the agenda is item three, special orders of the day and announcements, 3A. Recognition of the Fair Housing Poster Contest Award winner. Ms. Downing? <coughs> Um, I am the staff to the Equal Opportunities Commission, and as a couple weeks ago, uh, our chair was here to tell you about the Fair Housing Poster Contest that went on all week, I'm sorry, all month of April, which is Fair Housing Month. And like last year, we decided to present an award to the Fair Housing Poster Contest winners, um, but unfortunately, neither child could make it today. So uh, I'll still present it, or at least show you the posters, but just to refresh your memory, to celebrate Fair Housing Month, the Wisconsin Fair Housing Network sponsors an annual statewide poster contest to create awareness in school-aged children of the importance of providing equal housing opportunities to all people regardless of race, sex, color, national origin, disability, or family status. Each year, the Wisconsin Fair Housing Network chooses a theme for the posters. The theme for 2014 is I Have a Dream of Fair Housing. We did put the posters out uh, on display out there, the two winners. We did a first place and a second place winner, and residents and staff were able to vote all for the whole month of April. So the first place winner is actually the same person who won last year. Mm. Um, her name is Olivia Burakowski, and this is her poster. You can see it. It says, I have a dream of fair housing. <laughs> so we will make sure that she gets her award. And we did certificates with uh, the chair of the EOC and then the city manager's um, uh, signature on them, and this is a first place certificate for Olivia. And the second place winner was Korea Garrett, and her poster says, I have a big dream. And it's a house with a garden and a very happy person. Great. He's in fifth grade. So hopefully next year they can come and uh, get their awards, but um, this year they couldn't make it. Thank you. Thank you. Item 3B. Proclamation declaring May 11th through the 17th, 2014 as National Police Week. I'll read the pro pro proclamation. Whereas the police services provided in our city are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the men and women who protect us and defend us and serve us on a daily basis are highly trained and dedicated, and whereas the City of Beloit's Police Department is nationally recognized as an accredited law enforcement agency upholding the stringent standards of professionalism, including stewardship, integrity, diversity, continuous improvement, and knowledge, and whereas the acknowledged that the, the law enforcement is a hazardous profession that presents certain risks to those who are involved in the delivery of service and protection, and whereas the police officers are recognized or recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property and by protecting them against violence and disorder and by protecting the innocent against deception and intimidation, and whereas the support of an understanding, cooperative, and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of police services and programs which are all guided by the police department's problem-solving philosophy, and whereas the health and safety and quality of life in this community greatly depend on these programs and services and employees that provide them, and whereas we recognize the sacrifices of present and past employees. Now, therefore, the City Council President of the Beloit City Council does hereby proclaim 
the week of May 11th through May 17th, 2014, is National Police Week in the City of Beloit and calls upon all citizens and civic organizations to appreciate the contributions which these officers make every day to our health, safety, and quality of life. Presented this fifth day of May 2014, Mark Spreitzer, City Council President. On behalf of all the members of the Beloit Police Department, I'd like to thank you for this proclamation and <coughs> let you know that all of us appreciate your support in the past and in the future. Thank you. 3C. Proclamation declaring May 18th through the 24th, 2014 as Emergency Medical Services Week. City of Beloit, Wisconsin official proclamation. Whereas emergency medical services is a vital pu public service, and whereas the emergency, members of the emergency medical services team are ready to provide life-saving care to, the, to those in need 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury, and whereas the emergency medical services team consists of emergency physicians, emergency nurses, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, administrators, and others, and whereas the members of the emergency medical services team, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance the life savings skills, and whereas the, it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of medical, emergency medical services providers by designating Emergency Medical Services Week, and whereas on the year of 2014 marks the 40th anniversary of the paramedic program in the city of Beloit. Now, therefore, the city council president of the city of B Beloit does hereby proclaim the week of May 18th through 24th, 2014 as Emergency Medical Services Week, with the theme EMS dedicated for life. The City Council further encourages the community to observe this week with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. Presented this fifth day of May 2014, Mark Spreitzer, City Council President. Uh, City Manager R, City Council President, City Councilors, thank you very much for this proclamation. It's uh, very important to recognize 40 years of accomplishment in the Beloit Fire Department providing advanced medical care for our citizens, visitors, and uh, workers in our community. It's greatly improved the quality of life uh, and the advancement of the medical technology through the last 40 years has been incredible. Uh, from where uh, even our communication devices from uh, when we started to now is, is dramatically different. Uh, the care that we're providing in the field is highly advanced. And uh, I am, would like to introduce, and with me this evening, is our medical director, Jay McNeil from Mercy Hospital, and my deputy chief of emergency medical services, uh, Joe Murray. Uh, deputy Chief Murray has a commemorative coin for you this evening, uh, if you'd like to present that now. And then I'd like to give the podium to our medical director to say a few words about our program. I'm Jay McNeil. I'm the medical director for Beloit Fire, and I'm extremely proud and blessed to be in this position. Um, these guys, 24-7, day or night, they're out there. Uh, they're saving lives. And I think what uh, needs to be clear is that they're not just paramedics anymore. They are really out-of-hospital medicine. Um, and as we move forward into the future, we'll be looking at lots of different things going on in the healthcare arena, and pretty much these are going to be the men and women that are going to be delivering care to you in your home and your grandparents in their homes. It's going to be an exciting time, um, so we look forward to the challenges of the future. These guys spend a lot of time in training, and not just their initial training, but they do full-scale simulation labs. Um, they're constantly under my magnifying glass, and they do an excellent job. And I'm proud to say that if I was injured or had a heart attack or a condition, I would have any one of them take care of me or my family. And I live in, uh, in Rock County, so um, I drive through here a lot, and I hope that I don't end up on the wrong end of these guys, but if I do, I'm sure they'll take great care of me, and I'm just very proud and super excited about what the future holds for them for the next 40 years. Thanks. Yeah. Just a couple of notes, if you can imagine, uh, when we started this paramedic program in uh, 1974, um, the program was 
put together with $37,000 worth of donations that bought the first ambulance, the first defibrillator, uh, sent the first two paramedics to school. An ambulance today costs about $217,000, so you can see the difference. And that's just the ambulance. That doesn't include all the equipment that goes in it. And then our training that we put into those <laughs> medics, uh, around uh, 7500 bucks, And it's well worth it because just one life saved is priceless. So thank you again for your support of our program, and we look forward to 40 more years of service. Mention the uh, 17th. Oh, yes, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are going to have an open house on uh, May 17th at the City of Lloyd Fire Department. Uh, it's going to be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'd like you to come out. Uh, we're going to have uh, uh, several folks there that represent emergency medical services, family preparedness, uh, our local hospitals, um, and their programs. And uh, we'd enjoy giving you a tour of the station and all of our equipment and have a chance to talk to a few paramedics and get some pictures. So You'll be at Headquarters Station. Yes, on Headquarters Church. Station, 1111 Church Street. So we'll see you on the 17th, 11 to 2. Thank you. Have a great evening. Item 3D. Proclamation declaring May 18th through the 24th, 2014, as National Public Works Week. City of Beloit, Wisconsin, official proclamation. <clears throat> Whereas the public works infrastructure, facilities, and services are of vital importance to having a sustainable community and to the health and safety and well-being of the people in the city of Beloit, and whereas such facilities and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of public works professionals, including managers, supervisors, engineers, and frontline employees, who are responsible for planning, design, construction, operation, maintenance, and protection of our community's critical infrastructure, facilities, and systems including transportation, drinking water, wastewater, stormwater, mass transit, public buildings, structures, forestry, fleet services, engineering, parks and recreation services, <coughs> solid waste and recycling, traffic safety, snow and ice and emergency management services, and whereas the health and safety and comfort of this community greatly depends upon these facilities and services. And whereas it is in the public's interest for the citizens and civic leaders of the city of Beloit to gain knowledge of and to maintain an interest and in understanding of the importance of public works and public works functions and programs in our community. And whereas this year's theme is building for t today, planning for tomorrow, is a tribute to all public works employees who create the foundation of a stronger, more livable community. And whereas the year 2014 marks the 54th annual National Public Works Week sponsored by the American Public Works Association. Now, therefore, the City Council President of the S Beloit City Council does proclaim the week of 18 through 24 May 2014 as National Public Works Week in the City of Beloit and calls upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing public works related services and to the rec recognize the substantial contributions to which, which public works employees make every day to our health, safety, comfort, welfare, and quality of life. Presented this 5th day of May 2014, Mark Spritzer, Beloit City Council President. On behalf of the men and women of the, Buffalo, of the City of Beloit's Public Works Department, uh, thank you very much, and we're very pleased with the proclamation. And uh, we're also sponsoring a, an information program on Saturday, May, May 17th, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the 400 block of Grand Avenue uh, at the Farmer's Market. Uh, we have a rain date of May 24th, if uh, perhaps it should rain. And uh, the program should be a lot of fun. Our uh, recreation staff and all the other staff have been working on, very hard on it. It'll include Dolly the Dragon, heavy equipment lineup, face painting games, giveaways, and goodie bags. So we hope everyone might have a chance to come and learn more about public works, equipment, and operations and programs. Thank you. Thank you. Item 4 is public hearings, 4A. Proposed ordinance amending zoning district map to change the zoning district classification of a portion of the property located at 312 West Grand Avenue from R1B single family residential district to C1 office district. Ms. Christensen. The applicant had a plat of survey recorded for this property in 2013. This moved parcel A, which is that orange strip on the location map, from his property at 308 West Grand Avenue to the property at 312 West Grand Avenue. It continued to be zoned R1B 
um, as it was when it was part of 308 West Grand. And the applicant is requesting the rezoning to C1 to match the zoning of 312 West Grand Avenue. Um, this is consistent with the comprehensive plan, which shows office uses for the property. Um, plan Commission reviewed this at its last meeting and voted unanimously 4-0 to recommend approval of the zoning map amendment. I'll now, now open the public hearing on item 4A. Is there anyone wishing to speak on item 4A? Please approach the podium. Second call, is there anyone wishing to speak on item 4A? Third and final call, is there anyone wishing to speak on item 4A? If not, I'll close the public hearing. Are there any questions or comments? Motion for approval. Moved by Lupke. Is there a second? So moved. Second by Kincaid. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That's approved 7 to 0. Item 4B. Oh, I'm very sorry. Uh, that's on here for suspending the rules. Uh, so forget forget what just happened. We need to suspend the rules. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? I'll move to suspend the rules, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Moved by DeForest, second by Haynes. Uh, is there any discussion on suspending the rules? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> all opposed? The rules are suspended. Now is there a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Moved by Lupke, second by Kincaid. We'll get it right this time. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? And that's approved 7 to 0. 4B. Resolution amending the 2014 Community Development Black Grant CDBG Action Plan and Budget. Ms. Christensen. In November of last year, when you approved all of the rest of the city budgets, you approved the 2014 Community Development Block Grant budget. At that time, we had estimated that our grant amount would be $500,000, um, and we actually received notification from HUD that the grant award would be 572341 which is an increase of 72341 We were very excited by that amount. Um, so we did take to CDA a budget amendment. Um, that is our first step. And what they recommended was increasing the amounts approved for public service activities by approximately 20%, which would bring the public service amount up to $156,099. Um, and then they recommended allocating the remaining $45,540 in grant funds to the Housing Rehab Revolving Loan Fund. Um, we did, you may recall, we did revise the underwriting requirements to try to generate more interest in this program. And we have already seen more interest in this program this year. Um, we are keeping Christy and Bob very, very um, busy um, with loans and grants through the lead grant program. Um, so more money in this fund is very important. Um, this recommend, recommendation does include no changes to the originally approved budget amounts for fair housing, program administration, code enforcement, or economic development. We did publish a notice in the Bloyd Daily News um, advertising the 30-day public comment period. This is the night... Um, that citizens had to come forward if they had any comments on the budget amendment. Um, and this is also on your agenda for action tonight. Um, it, the amended budget is actually included in two places in your packet, so you can see what you originally approved, and then you can see the new um, allocation. Thank you. I'll now open the public hearing on item 4B. Is there anyone wishing to speak on item 4B? Please approach the podium. Second call, anyone wishing to speak on item 4B? Third and final call, anyone wishing to speak on item 4B? If not, I'll close the public hearing. Is there any questions or comments? Is there a motion to approve? I have a question. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think I was on already. That might have been where the mix okay. happened. Uh, go you. ahead, Thank Mr. DeVore. Thank you. Julie, I had to recuse myself the, when we initially voted on this before because I had a conflict which doesn't exist any longer. I think now I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> was, there, was there any agency that applied originally that was denied funds um, in the first round? Was there yes. any consideration about funding? Oh, that was the Salvation Army after school programming. Okay. Correct. 
Did the CDA deliberate that as a possibility? Um, we had opted not to fund them, not because there wasn't enough money, but okay. because we felt that that was a duplication in efforts. Okay. Um, the after-school program, as it was proposed, was out of the Broad Street facility. And at that, number one, at that time, they had no plan for how to work with the schools, how mm -hmm. to work with anybody to get kids downtown. Right. Um, and because there are so many after-school programs out there through the schools, through the Merrill Community Center, through the Boys and Girls Club, they just felt that that was a duplicating that effort okay. um, so they did not want to give them additional dollars all right that answers my question okay. thank you are there any further questions or comments on item 4b not is there a motion to approve Second. moved by Haynes second by Kelly <laughs> uh, any further discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. All opposed? That's approved 7 to 0. <laughs> Item 5 is citizens participation. We have reached the point in the meeting for members of the public to speak to the council about issues that are coming before us or may come before us in the future. The council will not act on any requests this evening unless the item you are speaking about is already on our agenda, but we may act on requests at a future meeting or we may refer a speaker to staff for assistance. We ask that you hold your comments to three minutes or less and avoid making personal attacks. I do have one sheet. Uh, Dennis Murphy, please approach the podium, state your name and address. Dennis Murphy, 1107 Harrison Avenue here in Beloit. And very briefly, I just want to say thank you to the city and to the uh, police and fire emergency personnel and city workers. Uh, this past winter, as we all know, we've had a rather old-fashioned winter. <laughs> and I saw services in Beloit uh, top-notch under stressful circumstances, and I know budgetarily as well. Um, both my wife, Barb, and I, we like outdoor activities, and we're cross-country skiers in the local parks. But... As you all know, there were some real cold days. We didn't go skiing, but you know, when I was snow blowing, I'd see that public works employee coming by and getting the recycles, and they're doing that all day. And a lot of that, including mine, sadly, was buried in the snow because there would have been snow overnight. And I just want to say thank you. Uh, and I'll close by saying, like many of you, I've lived in other communities as well, some very beautiful communities, Colorado Springs, Colorado, uh, some of the lowest taxes in the country. But their parks are not being mowed. The public toilets are closed. If you want uh, trash collection, you contract it. And so by the time you put it all together, I'm staying in Beloit. Thank you. we want to hear <laughs> are there any others wishing to speak under citizens participation second call are there any others wishing to speak under citizens participation <clears throat> third and final call are there any others wishing to speak if not I'll close citizens participation and move on to item six item six is the consent agenda all items listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member so requests, in which case the event will be removed from the general order of business and considered at this point on the agenda. Councilor DeForest, do you wish to remove an item? Yes, Mr. President. I'd like to remove item 6C. Stop laughing, Anna. <laughs> I'm just coughing. <laughs> All right. Are there any other councilors wishing to remove an item from the consent agenda? If not, the consent agenda consists of items 6A and B. Is there a motion to approve? Motion approved. Second. Moved by Lupke, seconded by Kincaid. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That's approved 7 to 0. Item 6C. Resolution authorizing final payment of Public Works Contract C09-16 Kruger Haskell Stormwater Ponds. Mr. Boyson. The Iverson Construction Company has completed construction of Project C0916, which is a Krugel Haskell stormwater ponds improvement, and has submitted all the required paperwork. Final payment now needs to be issued 
the project construction the project constructed four stormwater retention ponds on the golf course. The ponds are used to remove total suspended solids and total phosphorus from stormwater. The Iverson Construction Company was a low bidder of the project and they have completed the construction in accordance with the requirements of the contract to the satisfaction of the engineering division staff. The contractor uh, is now due $10,000 for the completion of the project and the engineering division recommends approval of the final payment in, in the final amount of $10,000. Thank you. Are there questions or comments? Cou Councilor DeForest. Thank you. Um, this project was completed quite a long time ago, but I know we weren't happy with the restoration. Uh, could you speak to what's been done to remedy that? And I'm particularly concerned about um, moving forward. I know we've talked about changing our spec standards for restoration in terms of what quality uh, soil needs to be used, what quality sod. Could you speak to that at all? Um, well, primarily on this particular project, the uh, you know it was done under a construction contract, and uh, the work is then of course judged by the standards, the specifications of the particular contract. So that uh, contract requirement has has been met by the contractor. Um, I, I'm not uh, too familiar really with uh, the details of what, in retrospect, might have wanted to be done differently with that project. I, I know there's been discussion of, uh, in general, restoration of at least some seeded areas that I'm familiar with of uh, of having more organic uh, topsoil, but I'm, I'm, right. I couldn't tell you that I'm actually familiar with this particular project. Right, and sorry, that Greg, this is um, before, the, before you joined us. Um, there were uh, quite a handful of um, restorations that, that at least I wasn't satisfied with um, because the, sp the specs weren't um, high enough in standards to be sure that um, the soil was adequate and the grass would be able to grow there. And so my understanding was that as a policy, the city going forward would um, uh, kind of beef up or improve those specific specs for restoration related to that. Now, now Does that sound familiar? My understanding, I'm not sure it relates to this particular project, but in general, I know that we have a, a higher degree of organic requirement in topsoil today than... Right. We did uh, the year before I was with the city yeah. due to a change that was occurring right at that time. Okay, and you've been so you're satisfied with this project that it's now currently restored the way it is. Do you think this was a problem with the specs or a problem at all with the contractor? Just to keep in mind for future bidding or no? Um, Just an issue with the specs. I'm, I'm not aware that there's any uh, issue with the contractor on the okay. project. I know that it was held for a while, and I think some remediation was done. Um, I'm, I don't know that I've heard anyone say that that reflects on the contractor. It's just sometimes something that is needed to comply with all contract requirements. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you. Are there any other questions or comments on this item? If not, is there a motion to approve? Moved by Levy, second by Lupke. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That's approved 7 to 0. Item 7 is ordinances. We have none. Item 8 is appointments. We have none. Item 9, counselor activities and upcoming events. Councillor Lubke. It was really nice being downtown again and did not seeing any snow on Saturday and, and seeing the <laughs> farmer's market and getting some goodies and just walking around on that beautiful street and watching her, just watching downtown Beloit come alive on that beautiful Saturday morning. There's no rain either. So uh, just to remind all the citizens, uh, Farmer's Market's going to be here for the next uh, four or five months. So, uh, you know, getting bigger and better every week. And uh, I was honored to be last Saturday, Saturday before, at the uh, Woods Bridge where they had a dedication of a plaque. Larry uh, read the proclamation, and we had a nice dedication for the uh, family members who were there. That's all I have. Councillor Levy. Nothing. Councillor Kincaid? Nothing tonight. Councillor DeForest? Thank you. I uh, had a busy uh, last two weeks. <laughs> I really appreciated the Arbor Day activity that I was able to attend. Um, the Earth Day Fair was wonderful. And um, at the Earth Day Fair, actually, some of our public works employees were there. And I got schooled and educated about the importance of not flushing uh, so-called uh, flushable wipes down the toilet. So I'm going to take a minute just to share that, uh, put that plug in, because uh, that's been an ongoing concern for um, our water resources division. We've had some clogged pipes because people are flushing um, 
baby wipes that are labeled as disposable, but they don't disintegrate or break down at all and are clogging up our system. So I just wanted to thank our, our Water Resources Division for being out there trying to spread the word at the Earth Day Fair. I also enjoyed going to Aldea del Nino and um, had some great uh, tamales there, so that was wonderful. And finally, I want to make sure that um, I say congratulations to all Bullitt College grads. Um, we're excited for those of you who are planning to stay in our community and uh, for those of you who might come back. And for those of you who are going off to other ventures, we hope that you speak well, Beloit, in your experience um, here while you are in our fine city. Thank you. Councillor Kelly. Well, um, I attended the um, Spelling Bee the, for the Beloit Library. And I'm embarrassed to say that our team lost on the word embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> We got Remember kicked out. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, I also volunteered for the downtown dash, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, they was really well attended, and everybody had a lot of fun. It was just downtown looked great. And then there was prom on Saturday night, and I volunteered that too. And I had a camera, so it gave me like a pass, like I, I could like be where the kids were, and they I, they didn't feel weird about me. So. <laughs> I took lots of pictures, and the kids looked great, and everybody behaved, and it was just very nice. Vice President Haynes. Uh, nothing tonight. And uh, I also enjoyed uh, attending and uh, speaking at the Arbor Day celebration and attending the presentation of the plaque on the Wood Family Bridge, the Garden Kaleidoscope at Riverside Park, and the Earth Day Fair last weekend. So it was a wonderful weekend of outdoor events in Beloit and great weather for it and had a good time. Item 10 is city manager's presentation. There is none. Item 11, reports from boards and city officers, 11A. Resolution approving $5,000 seat belt enforcement grant and 10000 speed enforcement grant from the state of Wisconsin. Chief Jacobs. Before you is a resolution allow, giving us authorization at the police department to apply for two grants. There Yearly grants offered to us by the Department of Transportation involving speed enforcement and seatbelt enforcement. They're based on our crash rates and statistics that the Department of Transportation gets for us. Uh, your approval of the resolution will allow us to apply for the money that's used for overtime enforcement uh, in those particular areas. Uh, moved by Lubke, second by Levy. Uh, Councillor DeForest. Thank you. Um, I noticed that it requires a matching, I think, is it 25? Sorry, I lost the page. Yes, 25%. 25%. And you said the match would come through in-kind services. Which in-kind services? Administrative oversight? Yes, it's a, okay. so, it's a soft match. So I just want to make sure we're not taking away from patrol time. No, this, uh, these grants will, uh, the officers who enforce these grants are on overtime. Okay. They're not, they don't answer uh, regular calls Great. for service. So. Thank you. Councillor Kelly. So um, when you give somebody a ticket for not having the seatbelt, isn't there revenue coming from that too? Does that not offset? Yes, not as much as the speeding tickets that we give out. Oh, that's true. A little bit. <laughs> not enough, but a little okay, bit. Okay, so that's not Those enough to cover. Those are really cover. educational tickets that we have. That doesn't cover your costs? Uh, no. Uh, no, they don't. And uh, I wanted to let you know that uh, it was somebody who brought up the, the Facebook page that the police department's running. That is very nice, very well done. I was just very impressed. So Thank you. We pre appreciate I encourage people to you know follow the Facebook page. I think you guys are doing a great job. We appreciate that. Uh, one of the reasons we're doing it is because we know there's a group of folks out uh, in Cyberland that can support yeah. us. And uh, we, I believe we have about 1,500 folks that are very supportive of us and we get some good information that goes back and forth it's a way for us to get out there and we'll, we'll put this on a pay on the page and the proclamation and hopefully folks will slow down and know where their seatbelts and not get a ticket are there any other questions or comments on this item if not all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. all opposed that's approved seven to zero item 11b Resolution approving grants from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources for Big Hill Park Trail Improvements. Mr. Boysen. In 2013, the City of Beloit applied for 50% stewardship grants 
from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources for a total project cost of $286,319.72. Two grants um, are included for the one grant uh, total amount to allow uh, us to stage the project because we were uh, programming the initial construction of the, that bridge portion over Goose, Goose Creek to occur in the current uh, 2014 construction season. And then the balance of the project will be designed and, and constructed, uh, we anticipate, in 2015. Uh, the grant contracts must be executed prior to the, any work starting on the project. The two projects will be part of the overall linkage from Beloit to Janesville and completes the city portion of the Beloit-Janesville trail system concept. The local match for the entire project is $143,159.86 with approximately 15000 of the match being provided from donations and the balance of the budget uh, and the balance to be budgeted from the 2015 CIP. The engineering division recommends approving the resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into the grant agreements with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Thank you. Are there questions or comments on this item? <laughs> Councillor DeForest. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to check. Um, the $143,000 that's, that's going to come out of the CIP, uh, I'm on the Parks and Rec Commission, and as I understand it, this will eat into the Parks and Rec portion of the CIP. Is that correct? Oh, I believe For that this is actually an, a... a uh, a designated project that's uh, not part of the yes. normal allocation for park uh, playground equipment. Okay, like that, that wasn't so. my understanding, so I'm so thrilled to hear that. Is that true? <laughs> I, I'm not sure that's true. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, the budget isn't done yet. Uh, there's going to be very, very limited resources again this year because of the city's general obligation bond capacity. So in order to fit projects in, there's not going to be room for everything. So I'm not sure that's true that we wouldn't take some of the anywhere from two to four hundred thousand that's normally set aside for the parks uh, and recreation facilities each year and use some of it for this project. That's kind of a revolving fund every year. We're doing work in different parks, different facilities. So if we did work in Big Hill Park in 2014 and 15, we would do a little less somewhere else uh, in any event. So it, it should rotate into the into the program. Sorry. So if, if I could follow up, I mean, some is three-quarters of the, the Parks and Rec budget. So are you saying that not all of the 143000 would come out of the? I don't know. We okay. haven't done the budget yet. We're uh, starting on the CIP probably in a couple weeks. So we'll know more as, as soon as we get that structured. Okay. Thank you. I'm sure we'll talk about it in our, our budget session. Yeah, we can session. talk about it in our budget work. <laughs> so you know it's coming, Greg. <laughs> I'm mean, going to have lots of questions <laughs> about it. Thank you. Mr. Boyson, I have a question as well. Do we know what the timeline is during this year for the installation of that bridge? We don't exactly. We, we must get the grant agreements completely executed before we in, in expend any funds for grant reimbursement. So uh, we're going to move quickly, I'm sure, but uh, we're going to make sure that we don't in any way make uh, the grant funding ineligible for expenditure. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Moved by Lubke. Is there? Second. Second by Haynes. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That's approved 7 to 0. Item 12. Aye. Moved by DeForest. Second by Kelly. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned at 738.